Greetings! I am the internet's Herpaderpaderp, and it's time for another edition of Ask a Herpaderpaderp, which, as the name might suggest, is where Herpaderpaderp, that's me, is asked questions, and answers generally follow the questions. I don't have anything special to announce or say, so let's get straight into the questions. Martin Gotham said, If you could command any Starfleet ship, which class would it be, and what would it be called? Hmm. I don't know. Choosing a class of ship is kind of hard because there are so many that look awesome, and that's mostly what I would be basing my decision on. I'm quite fond of the Excelsior class, or maybe the Nebula class, or possibly the Akira class. It's too hard to decide. But I got it down to three. Maybe I would choose the Akira class, though I guess if it were real and for some reason you were given a choice of ship when being assigned, I would want the most current up-to-date ship possible, whatever class that might be. I would name it Robert, after the sentient tire in the movie Rubber. Is that too silly? I just can't think of a good serious name for a ship right now. I can only think of silly ones. That shouldn't be surprising to anybody, really. Hobbit Feetman said, How is the AFV Club Centurion coming along? Incredibly slowly, but I don't think there's a whole lot left to go now. Maybe just a few turret details and the gun. I do also have to put the tracks together since I got the individual track link set that's probably going to take a while, but I have been thinking I need to finish it, so keep an eye out for a stream or two in the coming weeks. And then the video will be a fair while after that, to be honest. There's a bunch of other stuff that I need to get done first. Rid Phoenix said, If you could live in any TV show, what one would it be? Probably Star Trek. I'm not sure if that's just influenced by the earlier question about a Star Trek ship, but I can't think of any other TV universe that seems like a good place to live. I mean, there are plenty of good TV shows with interesting worlds, but a lot of them just don't seem like somewhere that I would want to live. For the most part, Star Trek portrays a pretty good post-scarcity world where people live to do what they're passionate about and such, and that seems pretty good to me. Trekan Belovich said, Would you put a KV-2 turret on a KV-1 chassis? Madness. Absolute madness. Yes, of course. Trekan also asked, Do you think a flamethrower rat would be useful? The asterisk indicates tank or animal. Your choice. I don't think that a giant rat flamethrower tank would be particularly useful. It seems to me that if you want to burn a big area, you might as well use fire bombs, and having all the flamethrower power localized in one huge machine seems a bit less than ideal. Probably better to use multiple smaller ones for that. The animal rat with a flamethrower might be useful, though you'd better be able to command it effectively. And I would hate for the rat to be injured, so that seems like a bad idea too. Loki said, If you could convert your fridge to look like a KV-2 turret, would you? That would be awesome. I think I would do that, though I would expect the gun might make it a bit awkward space-wise. It would still be awesome though. Martin Gotham said, Where on a model would you use gun metal? I recently got some and I'm not sure where in the model to use it. There isn't really a correct answer for this, though I guess wherever you want is an accurate one, it's not especially helpful. I would say that it depends on the model and it depends on what you want to do with it. It's not going to be something that you want to or need to use on every single model. I usually use gunmetal for bits of metal, shockingly enough, that I want to be a kind of shiny silvery colour, but not too bright. I've used it on guns, hydraulic rams, and in my recent mouse painting video, on the metal rims of the road wheels. You could use it to lightly highlight raised treads on tracks to show those spots being worn to a shine through use, and you could also use it on any bits of metal that are worn to a shine. Though it is worth remembering that metal will tarnish and oxidise, so it won't be shiny if it's been sitting for a while. There's bound to be plenty of other uses for gunmetal too. I'm sure you can find some for yourself as they come up. It is certainly a useful colour to have. Rid Phoenix said, Have you ever been to New Zealand? I haven't, though I would like to go. I'd love to visit places like Weta Workshop and see all of the cool scenery. Maybe one day. In the YouTube comment section of last fortnight's Ask a Herbert Erpaderp, Jan Tima said, If you could build a massive wargaming table, would you? Hell yeah. I mean, I would even settle for a regular, more practical sized one that I could just leave set up. That would be awesome. It would be a lot of fun to build some large terrain and things like that. 
Maybe one day it will be practical for me to do something like that. It would certainly allow me to get more games in. EP Art said, what if Derptopia had the same military budget as the United States? I guess it would probably be largely wasted on unnecessary things, or awesome and silly projects. Derptopia is already mighty and feared by all, but with that disgustingly large amount of money, it would be even more mighty and feared. And also extremely decadent. Luxurious, comfortable seats in every tank, and fancy coats of paint on every single vehicle. Amazing. Also, instead of repairing tanks that have done too many sick jumps, we would simply replace them. It would be glorious, that's for sure. And that's all for the questions this fortnight. If you have any pressing, urgent questions that can wait two weeks for an answer, ask them in the comment section below or in the appropriate channel on Discord. Now, let's go and check out some of the models that have been shared in the Discord community over the last two weeks. Trekan Belovich has shared this very nicely painted little Daimler armoured car scout troop. This set is in 15mm scale from Battlefront and it looks really cool. I tried ordering one of these sets for myself, but ordering from Battlefront is always a gamble whether or not you're going to get what you order. Anyway, Trekan painted this for his best friend as a birthday gift, thus the division markings have been left off for now. This is some very nice work. These little scout cars look as though they've been out scouting for quite a while. Also by Trekan are these T-55s. These are Plastic Soldier Company models in 15mm scale, and they're part of Trekan's Syrian force for Team Yankee. I think they look amazing, and the dark colours look really nice. Keep up the fantastic work, Trekan. I probably don't need to tell you to do that, because you do seem to get a lot done. The Flanders Pigeon Murder shared this glorious lightning. I don't know a lot about planes, but the Lightning is, in my opinion, one of the more interesting aircraft. And this model is an excellent representation. I like the little radio antenna cables, and I think the weathering is very well done. I like how the paint is particularly worn on areas that seem like they would get walked on a lot. Very cool. Nomad Productions shared this diorama. It features a Revell 350th scale U-55-2 Type 7C U-boat. It's Nomad's first time doing an open ocean diorama, and he's, quite understandably in my opinion, very pleased with it. I think it's very well done. The model would still be pretty cool all by itself, but making this diorama really brings it to life. Alexander the Mare has recently finished this Luftwaffe field division. I think you've done a pretty good job with these. They look like they're ready to do a bunch of killing. Or maybe being killed a bunch. Who knows what the dice may dictate. Very good stuff. Anibalius, which I've probably said wrong, shared this awesome set of German tanks. There's a Panzer 38T, a Panzer III, and a Stug B, all in 15mm or 1 100th scale from Zvezda. They are also obviously very nicely painted. You get a hearty thumbs up from me, even though you can't see it. Ratto has shared this rather glorious looking barbarian warband for Warhammer Underworlds which is something I've never heard of or maybe have forgotten about. These are plastic heroic models in 28mm scale by Games Workshop, and Ratto says this took about 8 hours to paint, and I would say that's 8 hours well spent. Very nice work as always. And that's it for the modelling this fortnight. As always, a big thank you to everybody who shares their work on Discord and takes part in the discussions and such. It's really good to see. Also, thank you to everybody who asks questions, watches my streams and videos, and is a patron and everything else that everybody does. It's all very excellent and I appreciate you all. Ask a Herbert Herbert up will be back in two weeks, so as I think I said before, get your questions in and have an excellent time. If you've not done so already, why not subscribe, follow, ring the bell, become a patron, or maybe just come say hi on Discord or Twitch. Links to all of my things are in the description below, and as always, I shall return soon. So, until then, be excellent to each other, and thank you for watching. Farewell.